Hi, Fuller Reefers. I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video is going to be like an update and a review of what's been going on on this uh, innovative Marine 40. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot different angles and I'm going to talk about the different characteristics and what's been going on with each coral. But before we go into it, uh, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the like button and hit that little bell. So hold on and let's go into it. Okay, and here we are. The first coral I thought I'd show you guys is the Singularia. It's been growing astronomically. As I've mentioned in previous videos, if you follow me, there's a video that I put a little, a bit back where some corals grow faster than others. And some corals, you look at them and you think they're not growing, but they actually are. But they're not that visible to the actual human eye. Now this one, when I got it, it was a teeny weeny fracture. I'm talking about maybe a fourth of what you're seeing here. And with the proper light, nutrition, and current, here we are. So it's been growing uh, exponentially. This section you see back, back here, this was like a, a little section uh, and then it's, it's growing up, up and it all depends during the day because sometimes uh, it will actually, like let's say let's, this tip here, this tip that you see here right there, it will elongate and uh, by the looks of it, I would say within an average amount of time, uh, this coral is actually going to reach the surface of the water. So this is the first core I thought I'd bring up and show you guys how it's going along. Okay, now here, uh, I'm focusing at the Anacropora, but also on each side, uh, you have a soft coral on the left, a tooth stole, and then you have on the right, uh, LPS, frog span. Now these, um, keep in mind that as I'm shooting this video, the lights turned on, I'd say, about an hour and a half ago. But uh, the Anacropora, it hasn't grown exponentially, to be honest with you. I do see some little shoots, uh, little branches on the lower part, if you can see it, like right there. Okay, that little branch uh, wasn't as noticeable as before. But it's, it's starting to uh, grow uh, a little bit. As I mentioned before, some corals grow slower, others grow faster. When it comes to the frog span on the right, well, right now it's not fully, fully extended, but I'd say it'll extend maybe like a, a quarter of an inch more. And it's actually changed color. Now the uh, stems, the uh, feelers, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're getting like, uh, like a brownish color in the middle. And then going to the left, that's the, recently the tooth stool, uh that I got. It's uh, like a, a brownish tooth stool. Now, prior to shooting the video, it was closed because if you follow me when I did the previous video about the psychophant corals, which are the tooth stools, uh, they tend to, to close uh, the uh, feelers. And then when the light goes on, this is what you should see of a healthy coral that they go ahead and they protrude, they extend looking for food. Of course, once a month or every so often, three weeks or give or take a week or so, they are going to shed and they're going to get that waxy coat. This one, I believe it shows a little growth on it, but it's too early to tell because like I mentioned previously, I recently got it. So... Uh, but I do notice that it has grown a little bit. And now here, I have that famous rock anemone. I've had it for quite a while. I would say close to uh, approximately about a year. It's looking better because I've started to uh, introduce uh, by Brightwell uh, Aquatics the uh, sinking pellets for um, LPS and also for anemones. And it's actually, it's opening up more, it looks more vibrant than before. Growth, well, I see it more or less the same way when I purchased it. 
It hasn't moved, although the um, rock anemones are known that when you place them either, I mean, no, no higher than, than the lower quadrant, which is like, of course, from the sand up to where it's at, it's advisable. Um, if you put them on the sand or close to a rock, it would even be better. But they're known that they really don't move that, that often. Although they are an anemone, so they have the characteristics that they so desire and they don't like that area, they actually would uh, go ahead and move. And now here we have the Florida uh, Recordia, and it has actually split not two, but three times already. You can barely see the third one, but it's actually, if you look at the top, you see like a little rim, like right there, that, that little section there you see there, that's the third one looking towards the back. These, in my habitat, in my environment here, I mean, what I do to keep this reef going and all that, uh, it's it's grown uh, quite rapidly, to be honest with you. It was just one polyp, and then it split two, and now we have three. Now this coral, LPS, I think it was a uh, Favite. I bought this way back over at Worldwide Corals, and it was uh, a five dollar frag. It was a uh, it was I think it was like two polyps. And look at it now. Now, again, this is one of the corals uh, that when it comes to the growth pattern, at least in my tank, it's taken a little longer to actually see what you're seeing here. And now here, this is something very interesting that happened. I've mentioned this before on previous videos. Right there, what I had was a pipe organ, or organ pipe coral, whichever you want to call it, there. And it was a frag, and it looked about the size of it that you're looking at now. But I noticed one day, whatever happened, the, um, the pipes, the, the polyps that come out were actually closed. They wouldn't open. So I looked at it, I looked at it, and I said, uh-oh, I think this uh, core is dead. So I went ahead and I took it out. But from the plug, it had cascaded, it had, it had actually had a rapid growth pattern, shall we call it, and it was coming down from the um, plug towards that rock. So I, I noticed that and I said, well, you know, probably die. Well, guess what? From that little section that attached to the rock, this is what, what you're looking at. It actually started to spread and spread, and here we have a regeneration of the organ pipe or pipe organ coral. This one, when it comes to growth, I would say it has grown pretty, pretty fast. Now here you have the Cephastria, the green one, and then on the right, the Recorda Yuma. Now the Recorda Yuma, it, it was just one frag, one head, which is this one here. Well, before you know it, I got two babies and there's one on the back. So what happened is when I started to see that from the uh, original head, I went ahead and I, I uh, glued it to that rock that you see there because by the looks of it, that rock is going to be completely um, populated by recorded humans. And it's doing great. Now here, we have the Lobophilia. This Lobo uh, has changed colors. When I got it, it was like, a, I would say like a peach color. And now it's actually changed to like um, those stripes that you see, like, um, I don't know, like a, a darker, darker color. I've had this for way back. I'm talking about uh, a few years back. Matter of fact, this coral, this Lobo, I had it on my nine gallon. And then when I set this up, I still had it on the nine. Then I decided to glue it to that rock you see there. And there it is. Now, Going towards the right, lower right, then you have the blasto. Now this blasto, it is one head, beautiful coral, but I've noticed sometimes, you know, when it closes on the lower to the right rim, there's babies, there's new little polyps that are coming out. Matter of fact, you can actually see one protruding like right, right there. You see that? Well, from there towards the bottom, there's another two or three. This one I also 
I mean, besides feeding brief roids and phytal fees and all that, I also give uh, those, those little pellets from Brightwell Aquatics. And it's doing great. Now, this coral, I'm planning, I, I don't know yet, but as these other uh, polyps come out, it's going to gain more weight on it. So that, that coral is glued to a little rock. But uh, that rock is just loose. It's just like a little piece of rock. So I'm um, seeing already problems. What's going to happen is that when it gains weight, I'm going to have a situation where it's probably going to tilt. So uh, I'm planning on gluing that, you know, where it's glued to that little rock, probably a little higher or in another area of the tank, but always uh, the lower quadrant. Now here... Uh, the Ganeopora, when I got it, I thought it wasn't going to make it. I acclimated it. It was on the sand and it would, it opened, but then it closed. And sometimes from my past experience and also from the new school and researching, talking to other people, LFS and, and looking at, uh, YouTube videos, uh, sometimes when it, and this is in general, when it comes to corals, you have to go ahead and. If you see they're not doing well, just move them around. And you might find that they're happier in another area. So here you have it. Here you have a scenario where you have a Ganeopora that you should probably put them like in the middle, lower, or even I've seen some in the upper quadrant, but that's rare. So this guy, I moved it there and it's, it's happy. It's doing great. The polyps extension, as you see, they're elongated and they're doing great. Then below it, then you have the zoos. I've had those for ages. It was like three or four polyps, and look at it now. Then over here, this uh, LPS coral was a $5 frack from Worldwide Corals way, way back. And it was just like one uh, head. And it's uh, grown quite a bit, although on this side, on this side, like back back here on this side, there's an area that it actually died, but it, it recovered and it's doing great. Now this coral, I've had it already, I would say about a, a month, month and a half. This is a, a branching Monty. When I got it, it was uh, more brighter, more like a mustard color. And now the colors have paled out a little bit, but you know, that, that can happen. I've heard also that on certain corals, it takes, believe it or not, actually close to or around six months to actually fully, fully acclimate. And then right up here on the right hand, right over there, that's an encrusting monty. Now that's an example of a coral that has very, very slow uh, growth rate. And back there, way back there, you have the clove polyps. Um, they named them uh, fireworks. They're very brilliant, very nice, same thing. That was like, I would say like four polyps and it's growing and growing and it's cascading. It's going towards the uh, right section of the tank. Now I wanna draw your attention to this little red spot that you can see way back there. Uh, right there, okay, that's uh, bubblegum Monty Digi, uh, red little Monty. That's been there. I mean, I've had that uh, from the old store of Worldwide Corals. That has barely, barely, barely grown. I've moved it around. Now it's doing uh, actually better. Uh, one of the heads, it was like a Y shape, and one of them is like uh, puffing up. But that's a slow, slow grower, very slow. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the update and the tour as we went along each individual corals or as a group. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing and thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.